Hi there, welcome back. This is Professor Schimmel. Welcome to Mind Over Microbiology. Today I want to start uh, lecturing on infections caused by the fungi. Uh, these infections are called mycoses. I'll get back to that in a minute. I had a little note to myself to make sure I reviewed with you a couple of um, uh, terms. One is septicemia and also referred to as bacteriemia. Uh, blood poisoning. Sometimes we refer to uh, these patients as being septic. Now what this means is is that there are bacteria actually actively multiplying in the bloodstream and as I'm sure you can imagine this is a, a potentially deadly condition. All right septicemia and the other term and I know we've done this one before but uh, humor me I guess uh, and that would be the term zoonosis Zoonoses is the plural form of the word, and this refers to uh, diseases that are transmitted between um, animals and humans, or it could be a parasitic infection. Um, an example of a zoonosis or zoonosis would be the disease known as rabies. Uh, so what does it say? Oh yeah, other examples, um, I don't know, you tell me. And refresh my memory, what is a reverse, uh, excuse me, a reverse zoonosis? Well, that would be a disease transmitted from humans to animals. Uh, okay, what comes to mind? Um, how about rabies again? All right, let's get down to our discussion of mycoses. I don't know what's with the little cards today, but anyways, here you go. Five categories of mycoses. If you take a look at your um, notes, so these are infections or conditions caused by a fungus. Uh, and there are five categories of these mycoses, and I've got them listed here for you. Uh, they would be superficial, cutaneous, subcutaneous, um, systemic, and opportunistic. And we're going to talk about some, uh, I think usually in most cases, two examples of each of those categories as I move through this lecture. And let's see, upon what two criteria are these categories based? Well, the first of those would be mode of transmission. Now that means how was it that you became infected? Was it by um, sharing a contaminated fomite like a comb or a brush or coming into direct contact with another infected individual? Maybe you acquired the mycosis through inhalation of um, spores or fungal hyphae that were in the, um, in the air um, or a puncture wound. All right, we'll talk about those as we move through this lecture. All right, let's go ahead and uh, begin our discussion of uh, the five categories with superficial mycoses, um, also known as, sometimes laypersons refer to these uh, diseases or infections in this category as tinnias. Some of, them's are, uh, some of them are sometimes called ringworms. All right, let's talk about uh, the expression ringworm for a moment. It's um, a layperson's term. It's actually not very uh, accurate. Now, this would be a, um, a um, it could be a, um, a superficial or a cutaneous mycosis um, occurring um, on the surface of the skin. And typically the, uh, the pattern of growth will be circular. So, okay, I'm good with the ring part, but the worm part, uh, worms have nothing to do with uh, this type of an infection. So superficial mycoses, before we get into a discussion of a couple of specific um, diseases, let's go ahead and talk about some general facts about superficial mycoses. First of all would be uh, that transmission is going to occur through um, uh, either direct contact with an infected individual or fomites. And these are, level of tissue infected, these are infections of the superficial epidermis and possibly the, um, the uh, scalp, the beard might be involved as well. Now, as a general rule, these infections, these superficial mycoses, will respond favorably to the use of over-the-counter topical preparations. All right, over-the-counter means no prescription was required and topical means applied to the surface of the body. And that could be, um, uh, it could be a shampoo um, or an ointment or a lotion or a powder, all right? Uh, now, some examples of drugs are listed in your notes. Uh, tenactin, uh, there's an over-the-counter um, uh, preparation that, uh, that's available, non-prescription, any, any pharmacy. Um, ketoconazole, now that one is usually a prescription med, but it is effective on, uh, on some superficial mycoses. 
Um, it happens to be the most effective treatment for a disease called uh, tinea versicolor. And then um, Lamisil um, is uh, another um, uh, antifungal that could be um, used as a topical. All right, so I've got two examples of superficial mycoses that I want to discuss with you now. First of all is a, a mycosis known as tinea versicolor. All right, versicolor um, it has to do with um, uh, pigmentation in the hyphae of the mold causing this condition. Caused by, and let me be frank with you here, you guys, I'm giving you my best um, guess at pronunciation of some of these uh, scientific names of the fungi causing these mycoses. I believe this one is called, uh, or excuse me, is pronounced pityrosporum orbicular. Okay, well, happens to be a yeast, I mean, as opposed to like a mold or a mildew or a mushroom, and it is normal flora of the skin on some individuals. Now, um, when this organism causes a disease state, what we're going to see um, would be, um, for clinical characteristics, would include the development of uh, multiple dark brown scaly patches on the skin. Now there is a, um, a photo in your outline. Um, it's not the best one, but I, I had trouble finding really um, very good photographs for this section. Um, anyways, multiple dark brown scaly patches on the skin. Uh, those have a tendency to develop um, on the back um, more often than other parts of the body. And they uh, also have a tendency to become inflamed and itchy. Doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun. Now, the geography of this disease, and what I mean by geography is in what part or parts of the world does this uh, infection or disease occur most often. And this particular disease is a common one. It has what we refer to as being cosmopolitan distribution. And that means that it is common worldwide. Uh, population. This disease is seen most often, it can occur in anybody, but it's seen most often in young adults. Uh, I'll address that in just a moment. Uh, next uh, bullet point or whatever numbered item on your outline would be um, um, predisposing factors. <coughs> Excuse me. Now what that means is, is that if um, one or more of these conditions um, is um, present, then the individual is going to be even more likely to contract this infection upon exposure. Um, and in this case, the predisposing factors would be poor nutrition, poor hygiene, excessive sweating, and, well, pregnancy as well. Now, the first three, they do sound like young adults, don't they? Um, uh, let's say teenagers uh, don't have a good diet, um, um, running around, playing sports, whatever, sweating, maybe their hygiene isn't as good. Uh, so I think you can see that if this organism was normal flora on their skin, uh, the, um, uh, the sweating, the moisture, the warmth, those are wonderful conditions uh, to encourage the growth of this, uh, this uh, fungus. Now, another predisposing factor for this and for many diseases is pregnancy. All right, I'm going to make a little joke here. Hopefully, I'm not going to really seriously offend anybody, um, but I like to joke that pregnancy is um, perhaps the ultimate form of parasitism. Uh, makes sense, right? A woman becomes pregnant. She has a fetus developing um, inside of her uterus, and uh, one of the, uh, or part of the definition of what is a parasite is, a parasite is an organism that is in close contact with its host, mom in this case, and is metabolically dependent upon its host. Okay, so I think um, perhaps you would agree that the fetus is indeed a parasite upon its mother. Um, we'll leave um, any other references to parasitic fetuses alone for the moment. Um, but in any event, because uh, the um, woman's, the pregnant woman's immune system is trying to protect her from being invaded by uh, parasites and uh, pathogens, etc., um, her immune system is somewhat compromised during her pregnancy so that her immune system does not reject the parasite or, in this case, uh, the fetus. So, women that are pregnant, they are somewhat more susceptible to this uh, mycosis and other diseases uh, during the course of their pregnancy, and this is due to their somewhat lowered um, uh, immunity uh, during the course of their pregnancy. Okay, so those were predisposing factors. Um, treatment. Now, um, ketoconazole, is, uh, which is not necessarily an over-the-counter um, 
uh, preparation, but it is very effective at treating this disease, um, usually in like a cream or an ointment form. And uh, in my notes, I've indicated uh, that the treatment should continue for 11 to 22 days. Now, mycoses can be extremely persistent, very, very difficult to uh, truly and completely cure. So uh, I guess my advice, um, I'm not really giving you uh, medical advice here, I'm just going to give you my opinion. How about that? Uh, in my opinion, you should be aggressive when treating this type of an infection. And if it says 11 to 22 days, I think it might be smart to go the 22 days and perhaps actually uh, take care of the problem. Okay, uh, let's see, what else do I have? One more example in this category, and that's a disease known as black pedria. And it's caused by pedria horte, which is a black ascomycete. It's a, it's a type of mold. All right, let's talk clinical characteristics. Um, if you uh, take a look in your outline, what you've got there is a photograph of a hair shaft with uh, this black pedria um, growing um, around it. Uh, all right, clinical characteristics. In, uh, this is an infection of the shaft of the hair. Uh, this can occur in the scalp, uh, the, um, the beard, pubic hair, um, hair in the armpit, any, any coarse body hair. And as you can see in that photograph, the uh, hair shaft, individual hair shafts will be surrounded by growth of this mold and this will result in breakage of the hair. All right, um, geography, well, this is primarily, not exclusively, but primarily an infection seen in the tropics. Uh, population, anybody can get this. Uh, the, the important factor here is, is exposure to the organism. And treatment, I wasn't able to find a lot of specific information, uh, just kind of a, uh, a vague and general uh, reference to cut any remaining hair and um, uh, try different over-the-counter topicals. Okay, if this should happen to you, go see your doctor. He or she will be able to help you. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and break a little bit earlier here. I'm having some trouble uploading these videos, so let's see how this works. Thanks. We'll pick it up in, um, in a little bit here with the second category, which would be cutaneous mycoses. Thanks for watching.